Hey everyone, let's talk some more about reactions. First up, pulling it all together as we solve for C. All right, let's recap where we are. Um, at chemical equilibrium, at chemical reaction equilibrium, this is uh, what has to be true. That Ka, which is equal to uh, negative delta G over RT exponent, uh, has got to be in balance with the uh, multiplied chemical activities each raised to their uh, reaction coefficients, stoichiometric coefficients. And then we uh, observe that if we assume ideal gas, which is a pretty good assumption most of the time, uh, we can replace this with yi to the nu i times pressure to the sum of all stoichiometric coefficients. And if it's ideal solution, which is, as we recall from uh, doing uh, phase equilibrium, ideal solution, not as good an assumption for quite a lot of things, but then that's uh, merely just xi to the new i. Um, when we're dealing with a condensed phase, I'll mention this again later, but when we're dealing with a condensed phase, it's probably just best to just straight up use the activities, using whatever activity model seems best for what you're doing. Anyway, here we are. Um, and uh, we've done a lot of things with this relationship. We've uh, worked out lots of pieces of it. For example, we figured out how Ka changes with temperature, uh, but we haven't actually solved this yet. And so a reasonable person, such as this little stick person over here, might be wondering, what the heck are we solving for? Right? Like, like what are we trying to find here? And so the big thing we are usually trying to find is what is the composition, uh, usually both in terms of mole fraction and in terms of moles, of uh, the reactants and products at equilibrium. And the reason we care about what the composition of this whole mix is at equilibrium is equilibrium is as far as the reaction goes, right? Like equilibrium is where everything stops. Now, something you will learn next year in kinetics is sometimes we don't have that long to wait, right? Like equilibrium can take a long time and we are busy chemical engineers. We have got chemicals to make. And so sometimes we, we don't wait that much. We're willing to settle for uh, something that's along the way to equilibrium. But we know we can't go farther than equilibrium, right? So this is the uh, this is the limit of how much of a particular chemical you can make in a particular way. And so we really need to know that. Okay, good. So now we have the why. Uh, let's give this a try. So uh, here is our example. And you wrote this out the other day, but I want you to take a pause and do this again here. Let's say we have our steam reformation of methane, making hydrogen and carbon monoxide, and we are initially going to charge the reactor with uh, one mole, a one-to-one -one ratio of both of our reactants and none at all of our products, right? So we wanna come through here and we wanna write that n at any given time is uh, one, let's see, times nu, so that's negative one, times xi, right? That's one minus xi, so it's one minus xi also. This is zero plus three xi. It's hard to write a three next to a xi, isn't it? Zero plus one xi. Okay, and so then, uh, and our total number of moles, nt, is, 2 plus 2 C. Okay, so now we are ready to write out the equation that we have got to solve. All right, um, and I'm going to write the whole thing out. You might want to fast forward to the end. I'll just sit here and mumble to myself for a little bit. Uh, so it's all of the y's raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So that means the products are going to be raised to positive coefficients. So let's see, what's y of hydrogen? y of hydrogen is 3c divided by 2 plus 2c. And then that's going to be cubed, right? Okay, so that's y of hydrogen. And now we've got to multiply that by y of carbon monoxide. 
Uh, so that's 1 C over 2 plus 2 C. And that is not raised to any power but 1. Uh, now when we looked at the reactants, they are both to the power of negative 1. So the easiest way to write that out is just stick them on the bottom, right? So uh, now we have uh, 1 minus C divided by 2 plus 2 C. And, well, we just have this twice, right? We have the same equation, or the same relation describing both of those. Okay, uh, and let's not forget the pressure. Times pressure raised to the sum of all the stoichiometric coefficients, which is squared. So it's times pressure squared. All right, so now uh, we got to solve this, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this whole mess and set it equal to whatever numerical value we have gotten from Ka, because remember Ka e to the negative delta G over RT. Uh, so uh, if we have a temperature and we've used that temperature to determine delta G, we can get Ka and we'll have a number. So there will always just be, this will be Ka and this will typically be a number, like a known number if everything's happening at a known temperature. And so you stick a number here, and voila, we got one equation, and one unknown, we can solve this. Now, a couple of things you've got to observe here, right? Uh, as I mentioned before, this is, um, there's a, a cube up there. So we might have more than one answer to this uh, question, but there's only going to be one answer for C that is a meaningful answer, by and large. So other values for C will uh, give us negative moles, which is impossible. Um, and I like to set this up in Excel. So the next little video is showing how I set this one up in Excel, and I strongly recommend that you take some time right now and set it up in Excel yourself um, and make that a practice. Um, you could also use MATLAB if you'd prefer. Make that a practice for any of uh, these reactions other than the most simple ones, uh, simply because we want to be able to solve this again and again and again at different temperatures or at different pressures or at different initial compositions. And we're only going to be able to do that if we have something flexible where we can change values and see what happens. Uh, otherwise, we are stuck typing this big long monster into the calculator over and over and over again. And that's just a recipe for making errors.